five years have passed since the British under Cornwallis surrendered to General Washington at Yorktown to end the war for independence. A convention is held at Annapolis, Maryland to discuss the problems of the new republic. Out of this convention comes the decision to hold further meetings to consider revising the Articles of Confederation. In May 1787, at a convention held in Philadelphia, it's decided to draw up an entirely new constitution. By late September, the new constitution is ready. This document, which calls for a strong central government while protecting the rights of the individual states, is conceived to provide for the common defense, ensure domestic tranquility, and secure the blessings of liberty. The little state of Delaware is the first to meet in convention to consider the ratification of the new constitution. The eyes of the nation are focused on Delaware. Well, Bob, there'll be plenty for you to write about today. I'm wondering, Mr. Latimer, what will happen? Do you think, sir, that they will ratify today? Bob, so few of us ever really know when we're on the brink of a great historical event. Here we are, you, Robert Corum, teacher and writer for the Delaware Gazette, and I, James Latimer, president of one of the most important conventions ever assembled in our state. We can look back upon uncertainty, and we can look forward also with uncertainty. But this new constitution does promise security for the state and nation. Promise? Yes. But it depends upon the intentions of men. A great deal has been written about this Constitution, for and against it. Do you have any doubts, Mr. Latimer, about the outcome of today's meeting? Not really. George Reed has seen to it that we have the votes necessary for ratification, but it must be unanimous if we are to impress the nation. Unanimous? Did you ever see the three counties agree unanimously on anything? I'm depending a great deal on the influence of George Reed of Newcastle. George Reed, sir, may have organized the votes in this convention but he hasn't even made an appearance here. Neither is John Dickinson. But would you say that Dickinson's work has all been for nothing? He is the one we really have to thank for the way things stand today. I was thinking just today of how he had presided over the convention in Annapolis and how he could have insisted upon shoring up the Articles of Confederation, which he practically wrote himself. Will this new constitution guarantee his freedom of the press, religion, the right of assembly, and all the other rights for which we fought the war? We have those rights assured us in our state constitution, but I feel sure that eventually amendments to the federal constitution will restate our great freedoms. I would like to have seen compulsory public education in the new constitution. Patience, Quorum. You teachers and writers can be so impatient. Believe me, this new constitution is not a perfect document, but as Benjamin Franklin said in Philadelphia, it is the best and finest that any group of men could have written at any one time. This is the rock on which our federal nation will be built, and with God's help, it will survive the storms that are ahead of us. final meeting of our four-day convention. But before we enter on to the momentous business in front of us, I feel we should ask the guidance of Almighty God. Will the Reverend Chaplain lead us in prayer? Oh, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, be with us, we beseech thee, in this momentous hour. By the light of thy Holy Spirit, give us a right understanding in the matter that is before us and the wisdom to decide wisely for the benefit of all thy people. And to thee be the praise, the glory, and the might now and forever. Amen. Gentlemen, we are 
assembled here from all parts of the state. There are many of us who have not always seen eye to eye on the great problems of our nation and state. But despite our differences, <coughs> we are united in one great hope that we will survive and develop as a state and a nation. Before we enter into the final business of the convention, it is proper that we hear from His Excellency, the President of the Delaware State. I will ask Colonel Alan McLean and Mr. Richard Bassett to escort His Excellency to the rostrum. Gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Delaware State, the Honorable Thomas Collins. Gentlemen of the convention, it gives me great pleasure as president of the Delaware State to greet you and to wish you well in the great deliberations which lie ahead of you. It is only fitting, I believe, that I should outline the events which have led to your assembling here. As president of the Delaware State, I received a copy of the new Constitution from Charles Thompson, Secretary of the Congress, and I immediately presented it to the Assembly as a subject for the most important consideration. The Assembly agreed and adopted a resolution setting November 26 of this year for the election of delegates to this convention. These elections were carried out peaceably in Newcastle and Kent counties, but I regret to say that there was some trouble in Sussex County, even though the voting place for that county was moved from Lewis to Vaughn's furnace, just to avoid such disorders. However, we are all, I believe, happy to learn that both slates of candidates were pledged to ratify this Constitution. I think that you are all agreed on the need for a new constitution which will establish a more perfect union, provide for the common welfare, and promote domestic tranquility. I believe that the constitution which Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Reed, Mr. Bassett, Mr. Bedford, and Mr. Broom did so much to cause to take its present form will give the answers to those problems and will provide the basis upon which we can build a strong, united, and at the same time, superlatively free nation. This, this Constitution will become the basis of government of all the 13 states as soon as nine of the states shall have ratified it. If this convention should reject this Constitution or adjourn without acting upon it, we may still become a part of that government, but in a way which would reflect on the honor of our little state. We must show our complete confidence in the five delegates to the Philadelphia Convention, who so ably defended our rights at every session of that convention. They are unanimous in believing that this final document is as nearly perfect as human mind can devise. Finally. I want to impress on you that I personally feel that upon the ratification of this Constitution depends not only our prosperity and felicity, 
for our national existence as well. Gentlemen, the future of this state is in your hands. Since the only order of business now remaining before the convention is the ratification of this new constitution by the Delaware State, I will ask the secretary to read the document. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Article 1, Section 1. Mr. President. The chair recognizes Colonel Allen McLean of Kent County. The delegates are familiar with every article and every section of this document, as I think the people of Delaware are. In order to expedite the work of this convention, I move that so much shall be considered the reading of the Constitution. I second the motion. It having been duly moved and seconded that so much shall be considered the reading of the Constitution, I will put the question. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and so much shall be considered the reading of the Constitution. The convention is now ready to discuss our action on this document. A committee having agreed upon the wording of a resolution on which we will vote, I will ask the secretary to read the resolution. We, the deputies of the Delaware State and convention met, having taken into our serious consideration the federal constitution proposed and agreed upon by the deputies of the United States in a general convention held in Philadelphia on the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1787. And by these presents, do in virtue of the power and authority to us given for that purpose and in behalf of ourselves and our constituents, fully, freely, and entirely approve of, assent to, ratify, and confirm the said Constitution done in convention this seventh day of December in the year aforesaid and in the year of the independence of the United States, the 12th. When our vote is taken, it will be in favor of or in opposition to this resolution. But first, I think we should hear from our delegates who also attended the convention in Philadelphia. I will call upon the Honorable Richard Bassett of Kent County. Mr. President and gentlemen of this convention, I deem it a great honor to have been one of the deputies chosen to represent the Delaware State at the convention in Philadelphia. I do not think that any of the delegates here feel that this Constitution represents all that they hoped and wanted. But I do know that the vast majority are not only satisfied, but enthusiastic about it. Now, if all the states ratify, as I am sure they will, then we will have an entirely new government. We will have a strong executive to guide our destinies. And may I say here now that there is only one man who I feel now best qualified to fill that post, General George Washington of Virginia. But he cannot become too strong. He will never be a despot because this Constitution sets up a series of checks and balances which will prevent either the executive, the legislative, or the judicial branch from ever dominating this government. <laughs> Gentlemen, I say this to you in all sincerity, that I believe that our deliberations in Philadelphia were directed by Almighty God. I believe that we, the delegates of the Delaware State, cannot do otherwise than to vote for ratification of that Constitution. And I strongly urge that such action be taken at once. Thank you, Mr. Bassett. Mr. President, times are extremely bad in Sussex County. Some 400 of our citizens have signed petition to have the state issue more paper money to help correct this situation. Under this Constitution, the states would lose their rights to issue money. I would like to ask Mr. Bassett 
if he thinks this is just and fair. Mr. President, the delegate from Sussex has touched on one of the basic needs for this Constitution. We must have one national currency in which we can have faith. Now we have 13 different kinds, some good, some very bad, and a continental currency which is a disgrace. Now this Constitution will provide the answer. With money we can depend on to be worth the same in Massachusetts and Georgia as in Delaware, we can look forward to building a strong national commerce in such a manner that everyone will benefit. I will now call upon our other delegate to the convention, the Honorable Gunning Bedford, Jr. of Newcastle County. Gentlemen, as you all know, the Delaware delegation to the Philadelphia Convention went there with the specific instructions of the assembly of this state that we should approve of no change in the Articles of Confederation, which provides that each state shall have an equal vote in the Congress. This Constitution provides for a bicameral legislature in which there shall be representation according to population in the lower house and equal representation in the upper and I believe much more important house. Now I feel that this compromise is acceptable to the people of Delaware as it was to your delegates in the convention. Furthermore, we were all convinced that a strong national government ought to be set up. And so we went along with the proposal that instead of merely revising the Articles of Confederation, the convention would draft a new constitution, establishing a strong national government with supreme legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We agreed not to secede if those changes which we opposed were discussed, although we might do so if they were adopted. Mr. Dickens was the one who first advanced the idea of the compromise which appears in this Constitution. He said in a debate that the accidental lucky division of this country into separate and distinct states gave it its best security for freedom in the future. He said that he hoped that this division would be perpetuated and that each state would have an equal vote in at least one branch of the national legislature. I hope that we 30 men gathered here today can be as unanimous in our vote as were the five convention delegates to Philadelphia. Here, 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 here. Let us make all Delawareans now and forever proud to say that our state was the first state to ratify the federal constitution. Here, here, here. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. The chair recognizes Solomon Maxwell of Newcastle County. Mr. President, this Constitution seems to be a remarkable document as far as it goes. But I am a little disturbed by the fact that the distinguished delegate to the Philadelphia Convention, the Honorable George Mason of Virginia, refused to sign this document because where in it is there any provision for the freedom of press, of speech, of religion, and of assembly. Should we not postpone ratification of this document until it contains some guarantees of these inherent rights of our citizens? Mr. President, I would like to point out that most of the delegates to the convention in Philadelphia felt that because the rights and freedoms mentioned by the honorable member are inherent and are already protected by the state constitutions, that there was no need to guarantee them in this document. I would further point out, Mr. President, that this document is not a static, unchangeable, sacred one. I would call the member's attention to that section which provides for amendments. I'm confident that any serious omissions found by the various state conventions can be corrected by amendments, which will be among the first order of business in the new Congress. There's nothing in this document as it now stands that threatens any of our freedoms. What we need at this time is speedy action in setting up this new government, and then we can act on the necessary changes. What assurances do we have that such amendments will be proposed? I would suggest that we leave this up to our assembly, which can draw up any such changes that it will deem necessary, and can present them to our representative and two senators to be offered in the first Congress. With such an understanding, I will withdraw my objection. 
Mr. President, I have heard on good authority that in Philadelphia, Mr. Bedford said that this state would seek alliance with a foreign power before she would agree to a constitution that might make it possible for another state to annex her. Now, God forbid that any such attempt should ever be made, but I would like to know what foreign power Mr. Bedford had in mind. Mr. President, that remark was made in the heat of debate. Of course, I had no specific power in mind, but I do believe I made my point that a small state like Delaware is jealous of its prerogatives and will stand up for them to the last. We of the Delaware delegation were successful in having incorporated in this Constitution a section written by Mr. Dickinson himself, which provides that no state shall be formed by the junction of two or more states or parts of states without the consent of the states involved as well as of the Congress. Now, I believe this is all the more reason why we must have ratification at once. We need the kind of government that this Constitution will provide. And we in Delaware have the rare chance to obtain the distinction of being the first state to ratify it. Now, that is the whole question. Is there need for any further debate? I move the adoption of the resolution, and I ask for a roll call. I agree with Mr. Bedford. But it must never be said that debate was cut off in any session of a Delaware Assembly or in any convention in this state. Does any other member have anything to say? Mr. President, I second the motion asking for a roll call on the resolution. The secretary will call the roll on the resolution to ratify. James Latimer. Aye. James Black. James Black votes off. John James. Aye. Gunning Bedford, Sr. Aye. Gunning Bedford, Jr. Aye. Kenzie Johns. I vote for ratification. Thomas Watson. Aye. Solomon Maxwell. Aye. Nicholas Way. Nicholas Way votes aye. Thomas Duff. Thomas Duff votes aye. Nicholas Ridgely. Aye. Richard Smith. Aye. George Truitt. Aye. Richard Bassett. Aye. James Sykes. Aye. Alan McLean. Aye. It's ratified. <laughs> Joseph Barker. Aye. Edward White. Aye. George Manlove. Aye. John Ingram. John Ingram of Sussex votes aye. William Moore. Aye. William Hall. Aye. Thomas Laws. Aye. Isaac Cooper. Aye. Woodman Stokely. Aye. John Laws. Aye. Thomas Evan. Aye. Israel Holland. No time. It's unanimous. I congratulate you, gentlemen on the momentous decision that you have made here today. This is a date which will be remembered throughout our history. It proves again that on the really vital issues, the citizens of our state can always unite, no matter how much we may differ on minor issues. Delaware has shown the way that we hope all the other 12 states will quickly follow. <laughs>